And good morning. This welcome to the Hawkeye session. This is Monday, December 7th. And trade in foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. The high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Before deciding to invest foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objective, level of experience, and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment, and therefore you should not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with the foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. This is, uh, again, this is Monday, December 7th. We'll go on to about 9.30 this morning, Eastern Time. This live trading room is for educational purposes only. No financial advice or recommendations will be provided. Any trade taken during this live session is not a recommendation or a suggestion that you should also do the same. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Do not trade money that you cannot afford to lose. And before trading live, always operate with a written trade plan that identifies the rules for entries, exits, targets, and risk management. And with that, we'll go to the charts. And looks like there was a uh, US yen. <clears throat> Let me change my screen here. Are you going to do US yen first? Or are you going to use. Uh... Well, we could do Euro US anybody. first because it's the uh, fresher. Yeah, actually, I'm already in this uh, US yen trade going short. And uh, we'll get the U Euro US. Yeah, I it's see it. It's kind of breaking the top of the trend line on um, Euro US right now, but it's not. There's too much of a, of a downtrend right now for me to consider going long on this. Yeah, I'm actually looking at this as being more of a trap area where it is right now. I would agree. Uh, uh, what I'm looking at is we have a, I, I drew the higher time frame trend lines and we I took it from with the, the high from the overnight high, the overnight low. And I looked to see where it came from, where that, where we got a, a trend line here. So here's the anchor, here's a hit, here's a hit. This pretty much confirms a downward trend from the overnight low to where we uh, came to the, the uh, previous pivot point which is over here about back on December 2nd. And that forms a trend line, which is uh, where we are right now in between. I'm looking at, I'm mostly looking at downward pressure. As this, uh, R, these RSI start coming up towards the 75 and 86 area, I'm looking at this as little, there's a little drop, here's a little basin area, strong move down, coming back to retest this. This is where I'm looking at as being the trap, especially with the fact we have a higher time frame downward trend uh, developing. And we can even take another parallel off of that from this uh, harmonic that was, or this area that was drawn last week. I just kept it on the chart and we had a pivot high. And this was a, uh, and we can, if we just take a parallel to that, we can probably see the, uh, the correlation here. And uh, if it does break through the top and comes up, this would be the next area they would probably be looking at uh, trying to test and you can see right there where the we have this was the high here is a retest of this area came back down now it's retesting this low and i would expect it to come down maybe retest this pivot line here before it goes back up again that's just uh, the way i'm kind of putting the read to this i said looking at where the rsis are on this 50 minute this uh eight period rsi is up here right around the 60 point it could maybe need to get a little bit higher but the three period came all the way up to the 89 off of this B move. And you can see they have a little bit of a divergence on this that where the uh, top of the uh, three period is high. It's making a, uh, that was pretty much right off at this point. Now it's making a higher high with a divergence. So we have, we have this peak right here. So we get a trend line here. And this is off the 15 minute chart where this, uh, we have a little bit of a divergence on, on this. Uh, divergence. So we have divergence there and we have a high with a lower high here on the RSIs.
I wish somebody would think this is this would be an area I would not want to try and take it long up here. We have the 30 minutes 62 coming down. We have the 50 minutes 62, which is right about where it's bouncing. And this is all into this trap area where we had this drop, the base drop, a retest. And if it breaks through that, well, it could go higher. But I think it's a safer bet to take it short in this area than it would yeah, be. Yeah, I it agree. Long. I agree. I'm not a I'm not a fan <laughs> of jumping into something like that. You could lose your head on this one. It could just be a pass and a check on the upper trend line just because that we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And we'll see here with the, let's see where, where our fib lines are. Let's put a 15 minute fib line, see if there's any fib lines close by. And no 15 minute lines close by there. Let's check out the five minute. A lot of times you see a blue line or a fib line somewhere close by, which is, is coming out of the green area. So right between this is looks like it's in a it's coming out of a demand area down here where there's the blue, here's the green, here's the next red. But this could be uh, I remember we said that the green on a colored one on any time frame is going to be a blue on the next lower one. So we really have our Five minute green here. Let's see, five minute green. We'll lock and we'll have a five minute red over here. And we're going to lock this. We'll lock this one. And we'll put our two minute FIP lines, which are seven uh, euro US to be seven, seven pips apart. So we'll put our two minute lines on it, that we'll have those marked on for in between. And we'll see what happens here. Remember, these are only seven pips apart now. We are on the 15 minute chart. We did get a 15 minute close above, but and let's see. So we did get the 15 minute close right here. This thing could go higher, showing some strength. Yeah, it's showing quite a bit of strength actually for a break. But I, I, I'm going to wait for a retest if I potentially enter that. Yeah. I'd like to see a retest of the uh, trend line before. It's going to have to hit the trend line and then take a five-minute candle close in the direction that uh, we're expecting. That I would be would expect a pretty good entry. The fact that this is still pointing down, this one is still, it was pointing down. Now it is kind of curled. This is going flat. I would expect it to bounce off. Of, off. If it does get up as high as the 62, 30 minutes 62 up here at the 21, 28 area, we could get another retest of the... Um, and actually, you see it's coming right up to the top of this top trend line, which is right at the top of the wedge. We do have, uh, this is up to the 75 area. On the 15 minutes at the 67 on the eight uh, period uh, RSI. And we have the hooks, these are hooking over on the one minute. The euro is showing strength on all three time frames by five. So I would be a little careful about taking it long at this point with that type of strength on the uh, euro. But if we can get one of these to start flipping over to the strength of the dollar, which the dollar is the second currency of the pair, looking to take that short. And uh, so we'll keep an eye on this one. Come over to our euro US yen. And we had the wedge alert here. And see, and one thing I was looking at with this one was we had basically we had a strong move up. We had a pullback. We had a retest of this area up here. And so it actually, this, where we had, we had the wedge alert at seven o'clock this morning. Actually, I have this all drawn out actually already. 
And we had the alert at seven o'clock. Here's where I drew the wedge band. If you see, actually, we have a harmonic here. We had a strong move up. We had a pullback. We had a, this is the top of the wedge where we had the alert. And if you draw a, a line from the, what's X to B, and we had, this is the bottom of the break of where the wedge was. Let me just pull that off of here. So here's the, here's the where I would draw the wedge. But once we got the break of the bottom, it came back up tested. Once it broke here, that's where I was looking to get in and looking at this would be the bottom. I said, this is nothing more than the upper triangle wedge area of what the harmonic was. And then the target is going to be down here by the bottom of the uh, this trend, which was developed off of this trend line, which we have. You can see we have an anchor. We have a hit, another hit, another hit. And it should come down and retest this. By that time, I'll be out of this trade. That was actually a fairly nice trade. It looks like it's going to work out pretty well for me. Any questions about any of this? Comments? I'm liking more and more where I see basically these harmonics are nothing more than a series of triangles and wedges. And it gives you pivot points of uh, pullbacks and retests of areas. And it just gives it to you all in one nice little diagram. Here's a nice move up. That's the, a, the X to A move, which is the longest leg. Comes back, it pulls back. We got the alerts that says, okay, there was a pivot bottom there. Comes back up and retests the A. And then it comes down to retest the trend line. And the entry on this is usually between the X and the B, draw the trend line off that. That's the, that's your break of, uh, and that would, could be where you, and it was the, and actually if you look at the A, if you can move this to where we had, let me see if I can move this out here. Let me take this off again. And we did have a little bit of a trend where we had the alert. You get on a smaller time frame. The alert came in at seven o'clock. And here's a smaller wedge here where here was the it was ascending. And we try to tuck that in as close as we can. But here is the pivot. So this is I like this a little bit better here for the, as far as the wedge goes. Again, you would pretty much have been right here, right when the alert would happen in order to catch this little break here. But you still would have had to have this to deal with. And I like the fact that it came down, broke, and retested, it formed its own little uh, drop basing area to a drop, and now it's back to coming down to the 30 minutes 62. Uh, pip wise, let's see what we got out of pips so far. Here's here's your seven pips right there. There's the seven pips. And you'd be actually could be in and out of that trade, or you can hang on to it and see if you can catch a little bit more down to bottom of this trend line. And any comments, questions? And those are the only two alerts that we had. Did and you get right your, now, uh, did you hit your take profit on UJ? Looks like you might have. Well, I, it, I, it did hit the seven pips. I have my target down here at this lower wedge. That's there fair. Was, but wait, there was a seven, you did get the seven pip profit here with the 30 minutes, 62. It came back, bounced right off of that. Mm. I'm still seeing a, a somewhat of a downward pressure. We're still showing uh, yen weakness. But that would have been a nice area to be taking the profit right there. Come back to the euro. 
It looks like it's coming right up here. It did break out of our trap area, so we can throw that away. We take that off off the charts. It came right up to the came up first to it bounced right off of this first wedge, came back up. Actually, here this looks like this is by a better area for a trap. We've got the 30 minutes 62. We have a trend line. We have two trend lines paralleling. It's right inside that trend line. And right now we have the RSI is at 70. Remember, we want to try and take this thing short when it's up at 70. You want to try and take a long when it's down to the 25. We got 80 up here on this one. You got 74 on this one. We're going to be looking for a pullback. I like to see these things on the lower time frame, on the one minute and the five minute. I like to see at least this three period come back hook and, and, and start pointing down. So you see that helps indicate that this is the top of that move that we're looking at. So go to UJ and see if that shows the same type of scenario. And I'm still looking for, this is down to the 89 area on the 15. It's at the 89 area on the five. Getting the bounce off the 30 minutes, 62. Now what I can do is I can move my stop down here to below my break even. If I want to go for a little bit more run, that way I protect my gains. And if it starts pulling back too hard, I'll just get out of it and see if I can get another entry for it. You see it's following the uh, 13 period moving average on the one minute. We had the Right about where we consult, where we got in was right where these five and the 13 crossed over, bounced off the 62. And now we can pretty much just kind of follow this 62. If it pulls back up, if it starts breaking above this, I'll just close this out and wait for another test of the, uh, of the uh, one minute 62. Don't want to give back all the gains. In fact, I'm just going to close this out. Let's see if it gives me another opportunity to take another short on it. I'll watch this 15 minute chart and see how the candle formation goes. If it can, right now we have three red candles in a row on the, actually four. We have a, three red candles came right off a little basin area, right where the wedge broke out of the wedge and broke out off of this trend line. So right now, I'm going to be I'm going to be looking at this little with this little candle right in here, and see if it will continue to go with another push to the downside. Over here on my lower time frame chart. Pick this in this a little bit closer. Any pairs that anybody would like to look at that we're not seeing? I mean, we just keep on looking at the ones that we have in play here. This one, that was a nice little breakout on this strong move up. I'm 
still not sure I'd want it. I wouldn't want to take it long without a pullback. It looks like this one is definitely going stronger. I'm going to retest this five minute red zone. Which should be a two minute blue, and then here's the green. So this is B. If you can get a, you can see where it came up here to this red area, came back up, passed it, checked it, come back out, couldn't hold it, came back, passed it, checked it again, and then it dropped off. So we have a little bit of an area right in here that we have to be looking at to see if it's uh, going to uh, continue down or if it's going to break through and retest the uh, upper upper part. So it's going to have to get through this area right in here. <laughs> and diversions obviously didn't work very well. That's well, never going to be 100%, right? No. All you can do is draw them out and just see. Uh, these are some potential. Now, this looks like this could, no. I said it's going to have to get through this. I don't see it getting through this without some sort of a retracement. Yeah, neither do I. Let's see this Euro US. Euro is the strongest on the 30 minute chart. The dollar, so it's, Euro's taking control of the 30 minute chart. It's, it's the strongest and the dollar is the weakest. And that's pretty much holding true. So we wanna go you know, look for pullbacks on the, uh, on this. And the Japanese yen is just about in the middle of all the strength of all the pairs. So I would say that one would not be a real good one to be. That's still showing weakness here. I still think it's going to come down and retest the bottom of this. I would not, I would not expect it to go much lower than that. <laughs> Let's keep an eye on this euro, US.
Actually, I grabbed some of that U.S. Uh, that Euro U.S. on the upside. Did you? Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you oh, get good in? for you. Did you. Where'd you get in on the close of the fifteen-minute candle? I got in on the close of the second five-minute candle outside of uh, the area that I drew. Mm, that's a clean entry. In, okay. And I got in at um, twenty-one twenty-two. Oh. Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> well, look at you. That's that's good. Twenty-one twenty-two. How far are you taking it? You already. Oh, I take my seven pips. Oh, so okay, got it. One twenty-nine. Okay, good. I like what you did there. That's nice. Twenty-one twenty-two would be right here at the close of this candle right here. Um. Yeah. Uh, yes. So we had the break of the wedge. We had the, here's the alert. We had the now this was the close of the 15 minute candle, right? This candle right here when this closed, that was at eight o'clock. This candle opened. This was our first five minute candle. This was the candle, the 15 minute candle that closed outside the wedge. Had a little bit of pullback, and then took off. The spread was good too, so that played into it. I thought even if I managed to grab three pips out of it, I'm still covering my spread and it's something. How long are you going to stay in it? it uh, sorry? How long do you plan to stay in it? Oh, she's already oh, no, out. I'm out. You're already, already. out. You're already out. I'm okay. out. Yeah. I'm, I'm not big on holding it. Because invariably what ends up happening, if I hold it and I wait, it turns around and comes back and I don't get out of it in time and I end up losing. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, I put my take profit and whatever it is, it is. Like I said, just get your daily bread, get your seven pips and move on to the next trade. Yeah. Or get your seven pips for the day and stop trading until the next day. Yeah. Exactly. Try and find those, uh, those stellar entries. <laughs> And then we wait for the next uh, opportunity. Right. Let's see if we have any more alerts coming in. Actually, I see there's a harmonic pattern for the US yen. Let's see how close I came with that one. It's still dropping. Then we'll go into the 50-minute uh, chart. I'm going to clear off all the stuff on the chart. I'm going to draw that harmonic pattern that, and we'll see how that looks. It looks like it's uh, coming to a the D part of the harmonic, which is about where I was drawing it. Let's see if this log in. Should be the USCN. There we go. And this was the pattern that I drew here, where this came. It came pretty close to what I drew. And here is the trend line. This is where I had my X. We had this where we had the B through the trend line up here. We got the wedge alert at uh, seven o'clock, which was right about off of this candle here. Drop, 
base drop and now it's dropping to retest here's the d area right here now you see it's going a little bit deeper than and actually i had my trend line all the way down here i had the anchor the hit and just a little bit differently but right here is where they're saying the entry to go long now this D oftentimes will move you'll see that it just as a C sometimes that the C doesn't get set right or it's that's the projected and sometimes it'll break through that but as long as it stays within the within the X uh, you're still good if not it's going to change the pattern and the, the, the the definition of which type of a harmonic you're you're looking at. This is basically the entry. What I would look to do when it's coming back in, if it comes back, pulls back, comes up, you take the take it there and then have your stop down below. Or you could take it as a hit coming down, but even though, even so, here's where the entry is, here's where the stop, here's where target one is. It's up here at uh, 104.19. So basically th this U.S. yen trade, as we, as I was showing it, we're also seeing pretty much where it came back down where the profits were. I already took the profits a little bit early, but nonetheless. And I believe I drew the harmonic in this regard, from here to here, the pullback. And then here's the target down here at the, uh, they have it at 104.11. I had mine right about uh, 10, that's, that's, yeah, there's a little bit higher here. 104.11, which is pretty much right where it's at right now. And so I use this trend line from from down here. This is the one that I used, I think. Actually, I had it a little bit higher. Or was that the other one? No, I just took it right off the X is what I did. But here's the trend line with X to A, X to B. And then we have the A to C. And the target was down here right around. Actually, I had my target a little bit lower. But I would say if you took this thing short, I'd be looking to get an out anytime soon. See how our euro's doing.
And any questions, comments, discussion? Just having a look around at some of the other pairs to see if there's anything going on anywhere. The Aussie looks good for possibly something. The Aussie was, but I haven't looked at it yet. Just looking at the um, RCS. Let's see the correlation here. We have a Swiss is strong on the four hour. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Aussie looks like it might be a good trade against the US. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Aussie US. <laughs> Let me get my broker up here if we get to see something. And see, we're looking at the correlation where we're looking at the Aussie, number seven, number seven, number seven. So it's got strength on the Aussie dollar weakness so we'll be trading to the Aussie strength if we're looking at something to come in let's go our 15 minute chart and see if there's anything we can find that might give us a clue that we might have a trade so the Aussie is the first currency of the pair we're going to be trading this looking to go long on this now it is coming right up into the overnight high the big drop overnight But here's the overnight basing right through here. Here was the, not a lot of movement. This was Sunday, no, this is Friday here. So on Friday, there wasn't a whole lot of movement on Friday with this pair. Seems to be mimicking the Euro US move. Well, with the dollar being the weakest of, the, of, uh, of all eight pairs, that doesn't surprise me. may not be that the Aussie is that strong, it's just that the dollar has become that weak. Well, the Aussie is number seven, though. It's a stronger than, stronger than the rest of them. That's true. That's true. And the euro, I believe, was uh, right up there, too, right in the top third. Yeah. And you also have the Swiss up there in the top third. So any one of these three to trade against. Let's see what the Swiss, we'll check out the Swiss uh, US. A lot of times you want to try and bet on the slow horse in the race. Let the others show you which way it's going. It's in your orange flags there. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. Or go up here. Thank you, Swiss. Wait. Uh, what oh, I'm looking sorry. For? I'm looking for you. I'm looking for U.S. Swiss. Is what I'm looking for. No, <laughs> My mind's going ahead. <laughs> okay, okay and this would be the uh, strength, to the Swiss strength to the dollar, and it's pointing down. It's going down. Well, let's see if we can if we can find a little wedge that develops somewhere along the way here. Maybe I'll have something to you know, to look at. Uh, the overnight, here's the overnight high, here's the overnight low. And here's yesterday's or Friday's high and low. Let's just clean this up a little bit. Take these moving averages off. Seems to me the overnight low we has a little bounce off of here, this area. So I'd be looking at this area for perhaps another bounce. And here's a little blue zone. 
and see what time frame this is. That's on a two minute. Let's put it on a five minute and see what we have on a five minute. That gives us a uh, 21 pips in between each one of these uh, fib lines. Let's see if it comes straight down into this area. Try taking it along if we have some confirmation down at the bottom with your RSIs. This could be a good target, good zone to make me take it long. I'd say it's more sideways range than trending right now. It seems to be about the base, right? And this area seems about where it comes back down, retest it, pulls back, retest it, pulls up, retest it, down, retest. Yeah, see what it looks like on a lower time frame. If we can get it come down, if it can come down into this zone down here, give us our moving average crossovers, our bounce off of our RSIs, get everything pointing in the right direction, that could be a nice little area to try and grab your five pips off of this bounce. That's what I'd be looking at with that one. That's the Swiss, all the US. See where our fib lines are. Again, each one of these lines on the two minute are seven pips apart. So I like this little area right in here. And then we come down here where we need to find some other areas. Let's go to a five minute. And we have a little bit of an area right in here. Remember a five minute green is gonna be a two minute blue. And then seven pips from that, see 73, 78. So look at seven pips away, be 71. So right about there would be the first third. This would be the bottom third. Let's see if that's right. Measure the distance here. Roughly 21 pips, so we need seven pips from the green line to the bottom of the red. Might move this up a little bit. Yeah, we'll do the same thing up top here. Actually, this one looks like it's already got some zones all set up for us there. So again, if it comes on up here, maybe try taking it short. If it's still showing, showing that it's uh, starting to weaken.
We just got a, an alert, the US CAD. Oh, did we? Yeah, a descending wedge at 8.45. Let's take a look. Clean up the charts, take everything off, start from a fresh screen. At 8.45. Yeah. And it's descending, which makes me want to think that it wants to. So here's the, there's where the wedge started. Here's the descending part, A. Here's a B. Here's the C. And we're gonna, uh, let's see, where is this thing gonna be? So it's already starting to break out the bottom. Here's a, looks like it broke out of the bottom of this trend line by the open of the alert. That was a 15 minute close below there. Let's take a look at the lower time frame. Remember we said the US was weak compared to everything else. So if we look at our Harmonics, here's the CAD is all the way up here. That's the strength to the CAD. And a little bit weaker. Right now, this thing's pretty much down at the bottom of the lower time frames. But it does have upper, higher time frame strength for the CAD. And that would be looking to go short. We have a nice, on the 15 minute, we have a nice strong rally up. Here's the real basing right now. See if, it, if that basing holds, or at least it's going to probably get, maybe get a little bounce off of this area right here. We'll take a look at that. It's a little wick over wick area. We'll call that the retest. A lot of strength, uh, weakness here on the RSI. Uh, what do you think, uh, Matt? No, I think uh, I think it looked like it could be a nice setup. What do you think? Uh, I'm trying to decide if it's going to, I'd say if it breaks through this area, then we've got a nice little target down below. Yeah, I think I might. Uh, got lots of room to the downside. I'm, I'm starting to like retests, retests of the wedges mm -hmm. before I get in. I like the fact we had the 15 minute break of this, but we had the alert, but uh, I think the alert was just a little bit slow getting because we had the 15 minute break and closed below this bottom trend. It's actually forming a little bit of a channel, but this could, I'd almost like to see a retest of back up here or into the wedge to get confirmation that this is still a descending channel coming in. This could just be the bottom fake out of the uh, bottom of the channel. Let's see what else we can see on something else here. Wow, look at 
that goal. <laughs> It may not give us much of a retest. I just nope. right now is plowing through the bottom of this. It's all right. There's plenty, plenty of trades in the forex. If it comes back and retests this this retest area, that could give us something there, possibly. I'm not eager to pull the trigger on Monday morning. So yeah. A lot of times they, oh, the institutions are just getting their weekly positions taken. And market's opening shortly as well. Yeah, yeah. That's the other Looking side that makes me a little bit hesitant is the market open. Getting in a trade right before market open, you're looking at your butt handed to you potentially because it likes to switch directions. This is all still the pre-market uh, moves. You notice we're almost to the nine o'clock hour, which we often mention that we have some good moves just before nine o'clock. Let's see if we can tweak this a little bit more from where we got the alert. It was right here at that wick over wick area. Didn't give us a lot of time from the time we got the alert till the time. So this was the alert candle at 8.45, so this red candle, so basically this candle opened up right up in here. This was the open of the alert candle. <clears throat> so it actually gave us 15 minutes, in this case it gave us 15 minutes to come down here and where it closed. Let's see what it looks like on the one minute chart. There's a retest of, coming up on a retest of the one minute up here, here to the retest area. There's three pips up to there to the retest. Strong move down. Target area would be if we decided to try and take this one. Target would be down here. <clears throat> and if you try and take it while well, it comes back up into this retest area, This whole area here is three pips. Three tests in the bottom of the wedge. You could take a shot at it and then your target would be down here, which you have a nice little range down here to the, where this origin of where this strong move came from. Make me do this on every one of these charts. <clears throat> Excuse me.
And we could try doing a buy stop on the bottom of this blue candle if you want to try and get into this thing. Sell stop, or sell stop rather, at uh, 2797. Here's 27. And we'll do the sell stop. Get that put in. Take profit six, stop loss will be 10. Protect. I'll start with 12 and see if we can get seven out of it. And I'll put the stop above the <clears throat> five minutes, 62. And the take profit is inside the target area. Go back to our five minute chart. There we go. So you can see where our fib lines are. I like this green fib line right here for a target, just before our test area. Yeah, looks like this one should work out pretty well. And the seven pip should be right around twenty seven ninety area. And I'll just move this up to five pip mark. Remember, we have to be able to clear our spread.
Yeah, I'll just be back in a, in a minute or so. I'm going to run okay. upstairs real quick. Okay. Okay. There's a little <clears throat> pull back just to retest the uh, the retest zone. <clears throat> Remember these candles close a lot of times when they close the the if it's if a can if it's a red candle strong red candle when it closes a lot of times the high will come in first before the next candle as it starts trending usually it closes goes up a little bit higher closes lower closes goes up a little higher closes lower. Right now, I would not want to see it close above, close above this uh, strong move, this bearish candle. If it comes up and closes above, it comes back down, retest, and it can't break this, and I would be getting out of the short. Usually when you get a pivot low, this is not a real strong pivot, but it's I was a little bit stronger. This is more of a pivot right here on this one. But this one came back down and it broke it, so that doesn't it's not valid. <clears throat> this was sort of like the fake out. Right now, as long as it's maintaining the, I would like to keep my stop at least above this yellow five minute, yellow 13. Keep it above these pivots. And just keep working the stop down a little bit if, until you either get to your target or you decide to you know, go for the reversal. We'll give it the room to breathe. All right, I'm back. I haven't really missed anything. No, not much excitement. Right now, here's a little bit of a basing area. We had like a drop. Here's the base. Here's that blue candle, a single blue candle, another drop, single blue candle. We'll see if this uh, creates more of a little trend going up. If it does, it probably will re come back and retest this. And then just uh, either it's either going to break it or you just take your profits or if, use that as a get out point. If it looks like it's starting to reverse, then wait for it to come back down to uh, either either get your stop up here where you come back down and it's, uh, if it can't break this low, then just get out.
going on here is there it's been well you know this is trading we don't always have to be doing something we always have to be talking sometimes you just need to be listening and looking yeah. and if anybody in the room that wants to look at something different or have any questions or comments while things are slow i urge everybody and anybody to uh, speak up and ask away <laughs> um this is not the matt and eva and al show it's uh, everybody's uh, participating be done here in about another 50, in about another 19 minutes we'll be done in this room for this morning and we had a couple of good trades right a couple positive trades so far mm -hmm. we got some out of the uh, euro us or the us yen we got some out of the euro us and it looks like we're working on our way to profitability on the us cat we had three alerts and three uh, positive trades this morning so far yeah, that's a sign for me to stop pulling the trigger. As we like to put the odds in our favor, um, we, we take so many winning trades and then uh, the odds are going to come against us. Well, like we said it before earlier on, we said just go and get your daily bread. All we need is five pips a day on a five thousand dollar account with two percent of your trades, and uh, that's enough to uh, make you very wealthy in a year and a half or so. But you have to be consistent. You have to be deliberate, disciplined. That's like discipline. Such a key thing. You know, a lot of people fail not because they don't have a good strategy, and it's not because. Uh, they're not smart enough to do this. They fail because they just don't do the same thing they've done over and over and over again. They get bored. Well, you try to go for more than what you need to. Which is You're absolutely aspect. correct. Yeah. Because if you have something and you can do it over and over again, it's simple, right? It, it doesn't have to be flashy and you don't need a thousand pips. You just need the same thing mundane boring thing over and over again and that's how you're gonna be able to reach your level of consistency i'm seeing more and more with even like with some of the other eas that are coming out i'm seeing that they're looking at the 50 minute chart and waiting and they're not talking about lower time frames than 50 minutes. And I'm thinking more and more that we need to be waiting for that 15 minute candle to close to give us validation that that's, and then look for the pullbacks off of that. But for the 15 minute to close below where we draw our wedges or where we draw our trend lines. 
and then give that room to breathe to maybe get a little bit better entry once that closes. Which was the case on all three of these trades this morning. We had a 15 minute close. And then we like we had this, right now we had the 15 minute close. Here was the alert. Here is our wedge. It was a ascending. It broke out of the top. Got the 15 minute close to close there. Here is the 15 minute close. And then you look at your lower time frames, your five minute and your one minute to see if you can get a better entry off of where that close was. Here is the close. Here was little doji. Here was the wedge. You had very little risk till it came back if it came back in. And then just take a wait for the pull back and then just take a buy stop after the pull after it pulls back. On the one minute, same thing. Here's a 15 minute close. This was the eight o'clock candle. This was the open of the eight o'clock candle. Here's the pullback and wait for it to come back in and take out and that way, and then this would be your stop. And then your stop would be from where you got in and just have that be your stop, four pip stop. If that candle was right and it starts making new highs, then you're, you're in the trade. Matt, you want to take over and we get this real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Give me just a little minute here. You go right ahead. Let me see if I can go just from your from your screen here. It's quite a quite a breakdown, eh? You'd think it'll we'll probably be able to hit uh, probably looking at a one minute sixty two bounce. And then the thirty minute sixty two is down here. So I wouldn't be surprised if it came back down and tested that. <laughs> before it uh before it did anything i'm starting to really like uh with the wedges specifically is the is the five minute chart it yeah. kind of helps me to keep my sanity yeah. and i find that i don't get whipsawed as much no, my I entries are not as tight but i'm willing to sacrifice that i yeah. i don't have a problem giving away two or three pips if I don't get whips, whipsawed, there's nothing worse than <laughs> uh, losing right before it takes off. And I found that, unfortunately, uh, when you're on the one minute, if your entry is not perfect, you can you can end up losing that trade, and then it comes right back where you wanted it to go in the first place. So let me see. Okay, Matt, I'm back. Thanks. Oh, you are? Okay. No I see, I can see it was a lot of going, a lot of action going on while I was... Uh... There was. I was <laughs> saying that we're probably going to get a 1 minute 62 bounce, and it's probably going to come down to the 30 minute 62 and do something there. We're and then you got the, your... Which, which pair are we looking at? Canadian? Uh, Euro USD. Euro USD. Okay. Yeah. Here's the one minute 62 bounce. We have the crossover one minute 62 bounce. And we're going to come down to the 30 minute. And then that's your wedge there, Al. We're going to come back down and retest that wedge. This is the one this down here. Yeah. So you got both wedges right there. You got a, that big monster of a trend line. And then you got your wedge. That's all within like four pips, right? right? Yep. yep. There's, there's so, something. And you got a blue line. We have a blue trend line, a 62, five minutes to the trend line. Oh, yeah, Another, bit. So th this is the this is where the alert was. So that was 11 pips off of here. Some kind of magic going to happen there, though, Al. Whatever, whatever's going to happen is going to happen in that that little pocket. In this little pocket in here. Yeah, it's kind of getting sandwiched. 
Let's take a look at the higher time frame on this. I'm just going to uh, remove all these. So we'll go to fresh screen. I'm going to go to a little bit higher time frame. I'm going to go to the see where I did for the last couple of days. Here is a low, a high, double top pretty much right here. And it broke the low. So here's a low, a high, a higher low. So we actually have a little bit of a higher time frame wedge right in this area from the from a daily price action standpoint this is friday's low this is friday's high here's the overnight low this was uh let's see what day is this this one is this was friday this was thursday so from thursday and friday this is the channel that has been trading and it did break out the bottom yeah, the, that looks like a clear, uh, a clear head fake. <laughs> yeah, it, it sure does, doesn't it? That's yeah, that's as good as it gets. Because there was a strong move up, came back down, tested mm -hmm. it. Here's a trend line. What's the uh, what's the retracement on that? Al, is that thirty eight two from the uh, origination of the move? From here? Uh, <laughs> before that. This one or this one? Uh, over there more. Over more? Yeah. Oh, no, it's not going to be 38, too. I like this is the, let's see where we at here. This is the up move retrace. Up move retrace. Oh, yeah, it's retrace. way too far. I, would, I could go with maybe this. I could maybe go down to this one, possibly. Mm. This would give us our, this could give us our beginning of our harmonic right here. So if we take this. We'll keep that up there right now. So here's the harmonic. Here's the long move up. I'm giving it down. Here's our V. C's up here and then come on down like this. So you could take this one up here to where the double top was. Maybe take it over to here. This one is a little bit higher. Just a little bit. So we're going to put the A up there. Here's our B. Our C is going to come up here somewhere, probably right around in, oh, I'm going to say probably about 88%, I think is what they usually come out to. And then the D is going to be about 88% down here. What do you mean 88%? Sorry, I missed that 88, part. 88% of the X to the D is generally right. They usually draw this. Oh, Gartley, I didn't know that. On a Gartley pattern, this usually comes out to about 88 Oh, on a Gartley. Okay. Yeah. I know each one has, is a little bit different. Each one, sharks yeah. and crabs. And... Yeah, and they're named by the different types of retracements it has versus the XAB or AB a, or, a, or the XA. Yes, sir. Uh, so this would be, I would say this would fall in the category of the Gartley, and what I'd be looking at now is I'd be looking to see a break of this trend line here, this X, the B. If it breaks the B, then it's probably coming down to the D area. Mm. So right now we actually have our own little, another little triangle right in this area. We can take it from here to here. And we're going to get the, and it's, right now it's determining where the C is going to be. But this thing can hold in this area. I'm just waiting to see where this thing breaks. If it comes up here, where it forms a forms a high. If it can form a high, have a trend line break. Here's our new trend. Now this one's not locked in yet. But right now here's your here's your little Play, there's the area that's playing in right now. And if it can break through here, it could pop, come up and retest this energy point and come on back down. And that's what I'd be looking at with this one. I'll just take this off. But we had the, on the 15 minute chart, Here's our C. 
We don't know if that C is locked in yet, but I'd like to see it come back up, down, and retest the C off of this area. Right now, that's not locked. And we'll see what happens. Because right now, this C is coming up to retest where the A is. We have a nice little trend here. And here the A was, we had a high of the A. And it came back down, came up, retested this. So this is another little area. And I put this one as a trap area. And the distance of that zone on this 15 minute chart is basically 33 pips. So there could be some more room to the upside of this. And we also see where there's a little trend going here so if this, C, if this area here can break this trend, let's see how I do this. Mm. And let's see where all of our moving averages are. This is on a 15 minute. This is all just speculating what it may or may not do. Like to see it close below here, come back retest. And then we'd be looking at possible, but still needs to have this kind of break before it really goes down to the, all the way down here to where the D was on the harmonic. Now this is a, this is my drawing of a harmonic. This is not a, harmonicpatterns.com uh, harmonic. So keep that in mind. Next, they have one for the... This looks... Uh, Here's the harmonic for the US. Oh, we were looking at the Euro US, never mind. That's the wrong one. And I will say a lot of traders stop trading by the middle of December for the last two weeks of the month. They stop trading just because they're taking more time looking at uh, how they're going to set up for the next year. And uh, the institutions start winding down. They start, they're, they're already locking in their profits for the year. And uh, so it's, uh, the volatility doesn't get to be quite as uh, robust as it is so. Uh, especially during the uh, fall and the spring. That's right there at the 88% right there. 
is on the US yen. This is that yen trade we took earlier this morning. That was at seven o'clock, I believe. And we had the 15 minute break of Let's see what it was. It was a seven o'clock, a ascending wedge at seven o'clock. Ascending means it's going from low to high. Here is the overnight high. Pivot low. Had the alert. You have the 15 minute break right here. This was the close of the 30 minute uh, candle at the uh, 7.30 candle close right there. So the open of the 7.30 candle, let's see this one was 10.15. This is the open of the 7.15 uh, candle. This would be the open of the 7.30 candle right here. Still inside the wedge. Move it over to the open of the eight o'clock candle. Maybe all the way down here. And actually, here was the ascending part of this. But I do like seeing this close up below this uh, trend line over here better. And that's about all I have to say about that. So that's it for today. It's 9.30. Market's open. We had a couple of nice trades. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Absolutely. See you all stay, tomorrow. Stay green. Tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. <laughs>